Here's a scary fact. In 2014, 47,000 Americans died from drug overdose. That's a new record. But if you peel back the numbers, many of these Americans are not dying from illegal drugs. The main killer is not cocaine, meth, or heroin. Instead, totally legal opiate painkillers were the biggest cause of overdoses. How did we get to this point? So in the 1990s, doctors were under a lot of pressure from advocacy groups, the federal government, to treat pain as this really serious medical issue. And there was pretty good reason for that. There were about 100 million Americans suffering from chronic pain. The undertreatment of pain is a major public health problem, whatever the cause. Some end up shuttling from doctor to doctor, desperate for relief. Under this pressure, doctors turn to opiate painkillers, highly potent drugs that bind to receptors in the nervous system and reduce pain messaging to the brain. And one reason doctors turn to opiate painkillers is because drug companies like Purdue Pharma said that they were safer and less addictive than other painkillers on the market. We now find that these medicines are much safer, much more powerful, much more versatile than we used to think. And we feel that they should be used much more liberally for people with all sorts of chronic pain. Yeah, that, that wasn't true at all, that these drugs were safer than the other ones on the market. And in fact, Purdue Pharma ended up paying hundreds of millions of dollars in fines for its false claims later on. The damage had been done, and by 2012, physicians wrote 259 million prescriptions for opiate painkillers, enough to give a bottle of pills to every adult in the country. Since opiate painkillers are so addictive, millions of patients got hooked on the drug. And as use proliferated, many patients overdosed. In 2014, nearly 19,000 drug overdoses were linked to opiate painkillers. About 40% of all drug overdoses recorded that year. So yeah, here's where it gets like really ugly. The, the doctors began pulling back these prescriptions, but what that actually ended up doing is that because these painkiller addicts were already using and addicted to opioids, they just went to another opioid, heroin. People who are addicted to painkillers are 40 times as likely to be addicted to heroin. Since 2000, heroin overdoses are up by 500%. More than 10,000 people died of heroin overdoses just in 2014. The government is finally responding to this whole problem. The Obama administration, along with local, state, and private efforts, have significantly increased funding for prevention and treatment programs. But fundamentally, doctors still need an alternative to treating chronic pain. One option that has gotten surprisingly little attention is another contentious political issue medical marijuana. The research on pot, it's still pretty early in large part because there are so many restrictions. The research that has been done suggests pot is actually really good, not for every chronic pain patient, but for a lot of chronic pain patients. And unlike opioids, pot isn't linked to deadly overdoses. That doesn't mean it's perfectly safe, but it doesn't kill people in the way opioids do. Studies also show that states with medical marijuana dispensaries tend to have fewer opiate overdose deaths. In the best study done so far, the research said that providing broader access to medical marijuana may have the potential benefit of reducing abuse of highly addictive painkillers. I mean, I wouldn't say that medical marijuana is like the only option for dealing with opioids, but right now doctors are in a really bad position. They want to treat pain as like a serious medical issue. The, the drugs that they were relying on, opioids, have caused this massive, very urgent crisis. And marijuana, it might not be the perfect solution, it won't work for everyone, but at least it's something to go on right now.